Your Life and Sex Island, Chapter 6, The Life and Sex Island, page 202. Wow! This chapter started as a little fairy tale, but it turned out to be a reflection or a spotlight of real economic life in the most recent hundred years. I certainly didn't expect that. So, we see when reviewing the most recent hundred years, it's just like our life in Sex Island where Trader Mac grabbed almost all the money by selling the free spring water like Rockefeller, Mellon, and some others did. Trader Mac brought our life in Sex Island to a terrible trial like our first Great Depression. And sure enough, the rich did the same thing to our U.S. of A. Let us continue. It is important to remember that the stock market crash of 29 was a symptom of the economic unbalance, not the cause of it. Let me restate that. The vast money or wealth inequality caused the stock market crash and the depression. The idea that monetary policy had something to do with it is just part of the truth fountain poets, think tank guppies, truth syrup. Here's one now, Wall Street Journal, A23, 61108. Quote, the Great Depression, which was caused by the new Fed, trade protectionism, and tax rate increases, unquote. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I just read that there was a 69% tax rate cut for the very rich? This tax cut was in the mid-1920s. Those very valuable professional liars at the Wall Street Journal are insufficiently paid. Some are paid less than pro baseball players. It might be noted that the Wall Street Journal is one of the great leaders in this war against the poor. They will never rest until every member of the middle class is securely locked in debtor's prison. This highly respected newspaper is on the desk of virtually every captain of every terrorist fighting organization in the world. They are determined to destroy every terrorist cell that is attempting to move industrial workers and engineers above the subsistence level. The start of the Great Depression is usually set at the crash of 29. But is that accurate from an engineering standpoint? If I don't put oil in my car in 1920 and it continues to run until 1929 when the pistons finally freeze up, when did the failure begin? I propose that some of the engineers among us might consider that the failure began in 1920 not 1929. I too think that the depression began in 1920. Once the economy froze up, the depression death march lasted about 20 years and caused unimaginable suffering and millions of deaths. It is important to remember that this human misery, suffering and death was deliberately, callously, and selfishly caused by the rich and the super rich and their chattel allies in the legislature and the presidency. The death, pain, and misery that the rich and the super rich caused was a hidden, unpunished crime against humanity. I was born in 1935, so I can't claim that I remember much of the Depression. Still, I was marked by it partially because ours lasted at least until I graduated from college. And I was close enough to it so that I am aware of how it marked everyone who lived through it. Not the rich and the super rich or their truth fountain poets who deliberately didn't and don't get it. George Burns, after he had become ancient and a multimillionaire, said that he still could not leave a room without turning out the lights, and he probably still stooped to pick up a penny from the sidewalk, marked for life. A stitch in time saves nine. Yes, 
All the wives darned socks until the socks were nothing but darning. And when the washcloths became worn through in the middle and less on the corners, they were cut into quarters and sewn together with the outside corners in the middle. When clothes could no longer be patched or mended, all the buttons and zippers were cut off and saved, and the clothes were torn into strips and made into hand-braided rugs. Patchwork quilts were made from worn-out clothes. Necessity was made into an art. Sow bellies were rendered. The cracklings mixed with buckwheat flour to make balkenbrie. The lard mixed with wood ash to make soap. Hobo jungles everywhere were populated by lost men who could no longer to see their children starve around an empty dinner table. And maybe the children could get welfare if their father was no longer present. Read Steinbeck's The Grapes of Wrath. Humans stood in a crowd by the mill gates in the morning, hoping to be the one out of 500 to be picked for a day's miserable killing work, with 499 going home to a more miserable day. And the rich and super rich had a grand ball with debutantes who were, fortunately, kept ignorant of the horror predicated by their parents. They, the super rich, are the lords of the United States. Quote, my lords, you are loftily placed. It is well. We must believe that God has his reasons for this. You have power, opulence, joy. The sun always motionless at your zenith, unbounded authority, undivided enjoyment, and immense oblivion of all others. So be it. But there is something beneath you, above you too, perhaps. My lords, I come to tell you news. The human race exists. I am he who comes from the depths of the poor. My lords, you are the great and the rich. That is perilous. You take advantage of the darkness, but take care. There is a great power. Dawn. Daybreak cannot be conquered. It will come. It is coming. The irresistible ray of daylight is within it. And who will hinder that sling from hurling the sun into the sky? The sun is man's right. You, you are privileged. You may well be afraid. The real master of the house is going to knock at the door. Who is the father of privilege? Chance. And who is the son? Abuse. Neither chance nor abuse are firm or enduring. Both of them have an evil moral. I come to warn you. I come to denounce your own happiness to you. It is made of the misery of others. My lords, I am the hopeless advocate, and I plead a lost cause. God himself will gain this cause. I am nothing but a voice. The human race is a mouth and I am its cry. You shall hear me. End quote. Spoken by Gwenplaine, the laughing man, set in 1690s, published in 1869 by Victor Hugo. A French Revolution like was imminent in the United States. Roosevelt's alphabet soup, the WPA, TVA, CCC, etc., saved democracy saved the free market, saved free enterprise, and saved the free world. We've gotten about halfway through our quick review of the most recent hundred years. The first Great Depression was a seminal event. The Depression was astounding, but what comes next is even more so. I'll be right back. Meantime, purchase the book by clicking the link in the description below.